Hi everybody, welcome to Brickfall. I'm Keith, and today we're going to be reviewing a LEGO Nexo Knight set, Jestro's Volcano Lair. The set is recommended for ages 9 to 14, the set number is 70323, and it runs at 1,186 pieces. Inside we've got a decent amount of May figures, almost a dozen here, a couple of Ash Attackers, Lavaria, Bookkeeper, Jestro, a Book of Monsters, two Scurriers, Axel, Macy, and Lance. So of course the main theme of the set is the entire lava setting that we have going through the middle of the layer and it looks like it comes with a couple of vehicles to go with that. So with all of these pieces, let's open this sucker up. So we have eight bags in total here along with a giant manual and a decent amount of stickers along with a multitude of blank plate pieces. So with all of this laid out, let's get started. So now that the set is completed, let's move on to the minifigs. First off, we have Axel. On its front torso and also the front of his legs, we can see some very nice printing, as well as an icon laid in the center portion of his chest armor, which shows a bowl. Overall, it's the same Axel that we've come to know and love in other sets. And he comes with two facial expressions, the first one being a little bit of a sure look for himself, and the backside being an angrier expression, both of them having a tooth sticking out of the side of the mouth. In his hands we can see that Axel has two separate accessories, the first being his main weapon which is a single blade transparent orange axe blade along with a slightly dented feature that reminds me a bit of a hammer actually. And in his other hand we can see that he has a shield containing the Nexo Power wall block. Moving on to Macy we can see that she has nice detailing all around including on the front and back of her torso and the front of her legs. Whereas Axel only had printing on the front of his body portion and along the front of his legs, Macy has it printed on both sides of her torso. Also along the front of Macy, we can see that her armor piece in the center has an actual icon of a dragon, which has a very nice classic and traditional feel to it. At least for a knight anyways. Her head has two separate and distinctive looks, the first being a determined expression, and when we move along the backside we can see that she has a sly look to her face. Almost as if she has things figured out. And in Macy's hands we can see that she also has two accessories, the first being her main weapon, which is a brand new mace. And I really like the hilt leading all the way up to the base of the mace. And in her other hand we can see that she holds a shield containing the Nexo Power Fire Tornado. And now here we are coming up on Lance. All of the details along the front and back of Lance are actually really well done, both on the front of his legs and the front and back of his torso. 
And on the front of his armor piece, we can see that he has the crest of a unicorn, which looks very nice and clean. Looking at both of Lance's facial expressions, the first being his more cocky look, and along the backside, he has more of a confident expression. And along Lance's armament, we can see that he has a brand new lance. Actually, in my opinion, it appears to be more of a spear than a lance, and at that, a two-handed spear. As you can see, if you look up close, it has a separated hilt piece in between the two transparent orange Lego pieces. Overall, it doesn't look like something that you would joust with or throw necessarily more so than defend yourself. But then again, that's just my opinion. The overall white body of the weapon actually looks really nice with Lance's armor. And here we can see Lance holding his shield containing the Nexo Power Flash Cannon. And while I'm still on the topic of Nexo Powers, I wanted to include this shot that shows you all six of the Nexo Powers that were included in this set. In total for these powers, we have Flash Cannon, Fire Tornado, Wall Block, Banana Bomb, Jungle Dragon, and Whirlwind. So now that we've covered all of the forces of good, let's see what they're up against. First off, we have Jestro, the Evil Jester. The detailing all around Jestro's body, both the front and back, as well as the front of his legs, has a very good, sinister appearance with all of the torn fabric. And you can also see at where his neck would be, a skull necklace following around the front and back of the actual torso. To go along with this sinister and fading look, Jestro has a very nice looking ragged cape. It's pretty fitting for an evil lord, as it has holes all over and is generally tattered and ripped at the back and at the bottom of the cape. Without his hat on, we can see that Jestro has a very evil look to his front, where along the backside he has more of a worried expression, but honestly it looks more confused than anything else. And if Jestro has this as his primary expression, it looks like he's gonna have to get his stuff together if he wants to defend himself from the Nexo Knights. In his right hand, you can see that Jestro is wielding his magical wand, which stays true to the whole yin and yang a aesthetic that they have throughout this build with red and black. Up next we have Lavaria, whose detailing overall looks pretty decent along the front and back parts of the torso and the front portion of her legs. And another nice bit of detailing is near her feet we can see that she has claws or talons for toes. And we can see on the printing that she appears to be wearing some sort of a thin armor. Lavaria has a simple hat piece which looks like a free flowing hood. She also comes with a pretty simple black cape as well as two separate facial expressions. The first is as close to what normal looks like for a bad guy, and the second expression shows her true color of evil. Lavaria's two accessories include dual wielded blades. There are a couple of swords really, but overall I feel the design isn't quite as good as what it could have been. Our next villain is the bookkeeper. His printing on the front and back torso pieces is overall very, very simple, but I mean, it looks fine for his character. And he comes with a hat piece that includes hair and ears sticking out of the top. When taken off, we can see that the bookkeeper has two primary expressions, the first looking interested, while the other one appears to be more excited. Unfortunately, the bookkeeper doesn't have a weaponry to defend himself with, but Lego shows in the instruction manual him holding a book of monsters. And here we can see all three books that were included in this set gathered together. Now that we have all the books together, let's take a look at them in more detail. First up, we have the Book of Monsters. It has a pretty good front with a monstrous looking face on it, ready to eat anything. And then inside the book, we can see the inner pages where a red-faced black horned monster is tearing through. And secondly, we have the Book of Destruction, which has a nice transparent orange cover and explosive detailing. When we look inside the book, we can see a page that's being torn open by a brown monster with many teeth. And finally, for our last book, we have the Book of Revenge, which has a nice looking green emerald cover and claws that are tearing through the front page. When we look inside at the inner pages, we can see a red spider ripping through. Moving on now, we have two separate scurriers with alternate looks. The first scurrier being printed in a standard red, while the second one has a very nice print that looks like molten rock. With the red scurrier, we can see that he has decent printing along the front as well as two horns sticking out the side of his head and the same type of horn piece used for his tail. Based on his facial expression we can see that he appears to be quite mischievous. For the alternate print scurrier we can see he has that very nice black and orange detailing on the front of his body along with two orange horns that contrast really well with the black that have been used as the same piece for his tail. His facial expression is by far the most sinister out of all of these evil minifigs. This black magma scurrier comes with a pickaxe like weapon. It's funny because it appears that Lego actually used two ice gate pieces to sort of give this weapon the appearance of being a dual sided pickaxe. By far I'm really liking the orange and black contrasting on that alternate scurrier. But both minifigs look really nice. Among the last of all of the minifigures, we have two standard Ash attackers. 
There's not really anything too different about them here. But they do come with two brand new spears. Typically the Ash Attackers have been given some pretty basic jagged blades, but this time they have a spear that's very similar to Lance's without the transparent orange pieces. But I suppose I'm getting a little ahead of myself, so let's actually go into the detail of these Ash Attackers. The detailing on them is very excellent. The armor actually appears to have multiple layers going on and it looks very nice and realistic, both on the front and back, as well as the front armor plates on the legs. They also come with some really nice looking spiky shoulder armor and a rocky helmet with orange horns coming out both sides. They both have the same two facial expressions, the first being angry and the second being angrier. So now that we've covered all of the minifigures in this massive set, let's move on to the awesome vehicles. First up for this set's great vehicles, we have Axel's brand new hover horse. The first thing that you might notice on this is the detailing with all of the yellow pieces throughout the horse build, which really go well with Axel's armor. Immediately, the first thing that stuck out to me are these sort of custom customized handles that they gave Axel so that he's able to actually grip them while he's standing on his horse. This is a really great design as Axel's hands are non-posable whatsoever, and generally pretty ginormous. Axel's brand new hover horse has some nice details such as these transparent orange holsters that he can use to hold his two pieces of equipment that come in this set. Out of all the pieces that make up one of these hover horses, my favorite has always been this engine piece on the end, which looks really great and realistic from a sideways perspective. Overall, I really like the look of the hover horse, and I think it looks really nice with Axel. Up next for our second vehicle, we have Macy's Mace Slammer. If it wasn't apparent before, the ship has been designed to look like a mace as we can see from the hill or the engine that leads up from the back of the ship, and these spiky triangles to resemble the head of her mace. Along the frontmost triangle we can see a couple of the sticker detailing which looks really nice and adds to the whole character and aesthetic of Macy's red armor. Inside the cockpit of the Mace Slammer we can see a very nice transparent orange windshield as well as a simple control stick to fly the craft. But this isn't just a craft for flying around in, it also has a pretty decent amount of armament, including two separate flick missiles and a ball launcher. The ball launcher actually fires at a respectable distance, where the flick missiles themselves work as a close range function. In other words, ball shooter long range, flick missile short range. So that about covers all of the vehicles now, let's move on to Jestro's Evil Lair. Overall this set is great, it's a decent size and it has a lot of play features throughout, hidden all through the build. It really just feels like a great setting for a final showdown of sorts. By far my favorite part of this entire set is the way that they worked in all of the flowing lava pieces. Taking a closer look we can see that there's scattered cheese wedges in the transparent orange. There's just so much to cover in this set, and while I'm still at this perspective of looking at this entire thing from the front, I really should say that this top part here where there's the throne for Jestro is actually a detachable fighter. Of course you don't have to use a fighter since it looks so great as a throne anyways. But let's take a closer look at it in its fighter function. Overall the build for this fighter is pretty wacky. I mean, overall it's pretty cool that his throne can transform into an escapable fighter of sorts. Technically I wouldn't classify it as a vehicle so much as an escapable throne, but really that's just my opinion. Moving down the sides of this escapable throne we can see exposed Technic pieces which sort of mimic robot legs or mech legs, but oddly enough these legs cannot separate from the tower becoming another vehicle in and of itself. Because of this I'd have to say that the choice of using Technic pieces for the actual support of the throne really doesn't look that great. However, on the front of this structure we can see that there are four nicely placed teeth pieces. This really adds to the whole monster aesthetic of Nexo Knights. If you look closely, the top base of this tower combined with the throne and everything else for the detail going around the edges of course mimics the mouth, but when put in a certain way, you can see how this really forms an entire face, especially how these two flat circle pieces here in the reddish burgundy color mimic the sort of eyes that you would see on a creature. And then working our way down even further, we can see a custom sticker with Jestro's name on it. When we move down this right staircase, we can see that there's another exposed Technic piece, which uh, again, I really don't care for, but it does lead up to a disc launcher turret. On the sides of this turret we can see a couple of spider legs which add to the monstrous aesthetic yet again. Which is another nice detail for the whole monstrous look. And then we have these spikes coming out of the front of this turret which makes it look like it has a spike launching feature. The turret itself has great posability all around. Initially before building this set my impression was that the turret wasn't going to have much function or bendability but it can actually aim downwards pretty well. Its shot distance isn't too bad either. Further along this right side of the stairwell, we can see a nice sort of landing point here in the middle that looks pretty defensible, and the stairwell continues down all the way to the ground floor. Off the side of this stairwell, we have a very nice looking saw blade that works really well. It has a decent amount of power, enough to kick back pretty much any minifig. 
That about covers the right side of this set, so let's move on to the left now. The top of the tower has a really nice wide platform to easily defend from, and the details found all around the circumference of this tower look really nice, such as the spiked tips that you can see, and then also these flaming torches. We can also see some really nice lava chains in that transparent orange. And this actually brings me to one of the coolest play features in this entire set, a collapsible bridge. By pulling out this Technic piece, it actually gives way to the bridge, which lets down below to a pit monster waiting to eat anything that falls into its maw. This play feature is really great, and on top of everything else, there's a winch over here to the side that turns the pit monster in the lava pool in circles. This makes for a really great spinning vortex, and this is certainly a trap that no minifig in their right mind would want to fall into. But before I get ahead of myself, I really should finish covering this secondary tower on the left. Looking down further along this secondary tower, we can see that it's actually the holding place for two of the books. The Book of Revenge and the Book of Destruction. At first glance, it's a heavily armored, nearly impenetrable tower that no one can access. But thankfully, our capable Nexo Knights can activate this play feature which launches off the side of the tower, exposing the hidden library room inside. Now that we've moved down the tower enough, we've come to the first floor, and we can see that there's an extended wall on the side of this tower. The wall looks pretty decent overall and has another one of these heavily armored pieces in the front that forms a sort of quarter tower in which a single minifigure can stand and defend from. On the other side of this wall, we can see that it contains a small armory with two jagged blades. I'm also really liking this small red sinister looking spider. It's a nice bit of detailing which reminds you that this is in fact an evil layer. Starting on the first main tower, we can see that the second floor, or what could be considered the second floor, has an actual bathtub inside. And the funny thing is it appears that LEGO has used a yellow frog in place of a yellow ducky for the bathtub. And you can see that we have a nice gold colored faucet for the bathtub. Moving on, going down the line, we see that there's a sort of treasure room in which there's a case containing a very nice broadsword and another wooden case containing two gold cups. And just beyond these two crates, we can see a sort of treasure chest which contains what looks like two potion bottles. The nice thing about this entire treasure chest isn't just the fact that it has a really nice looking orange transparent lid, but that it's also attached to these two simple base plates which makes it really easy to access to put either down on its spot or to pull out of the tower itself. On the lowest floor we can see a sort of secondary armory with two customizable weapons. The first of these weapons looks like a double sided hammer, or a power hammer really, and the second weapon looks like a dual sided scythe. Also for some reason at the base of this tower for supports we have transparent orange pieces here which look like the flowing lava that we saw along the front and I'm not really sure where it's supposed to be flowing from in the first place but oh well it still looks nice here we can see Jestro's sleeping quarters the top of his bed is made from some really simple but nice looking tile pieces that are in the red and black alternating color scheme that's found throughout this entire set another nice detail is a sort of water mug that's off to the side of his bed and while we're still on the first floor, let's take a look at some of the other sides of this. Starting on the left, we can see a prison cell that's meant to hold one of the Nexo Knights captive. Or pretty much anyone who opposes Jestro. And here we come to another clever play feature. A destructible wall on the side of the prison that lets loose anyone who's captured inside. You can do this by simply hitting the switch that's in front of the prison entrance. Or hit it with any of the Nexo Knights weapons. Coming alongside the prison cell, we can see a simple brown bed, along with a white rat skittering across the floor, and in the corner you can see a pot that's meant for hot food if the Nexo Knight is lucky. So that just about covers the left side of this build, let's move alongside the right. This is kind of a nice addition to the set. Inside, you can see that we have a cooking station of sorts with a giant pot in the center, as well as a chicken cage with one small chicken, and a small cabinet containing a banana for some reason, and salt and pepper shakers. Not the best stocked kitchen in the entire world, but hey, who would want to be eating here in the first place? But then again, I could be wrong, and maybe it's not so much as a kitchen as a potion brewing station. I'll let you guys decide on that one. But all the same, I think it's a nice addition to this entire layer. So overall, I think this is actually a really good set. It has a decent amount of play features throughout, it came with a good amount of vehicles, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised with the number of characters and vehicles that came in this thing, as well as all of the additional weaponry that was included. Alright, so that's all for this video. If you liked the set, you can purchase it in the link below in the description. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching us here in Brickfall, and we'll see you in the next video.